we don't have a single gene, we don't have a single structure that was meant to read. Reading is a cultural invention that basically happened somewhere between five, six thousand years ago. It didn't have anything here to unfold. We had to learn. We uh, researched RAVO for a minimum of 12 years before we decided that it was in a form that we would be proud and happy to share the program with other teachers. We've been sharing our results, but now the question was, was the program at a place where we felt like we could share it with the, with the community? Lots of programs out there to teach children how to read, but this was a program that really for us provided the link between kind of reading to connected texts and actually having the tools to break down the language in the sentences and in the words so that you could actually get to what children needed. How many does that mean? One. It means one. For a child to understand one single word, how it could be used, its multiple meanings, how it can change the entire meaning of a sentence, how one single word can change the entire meaning even of a story, absolutely unites an extraordinary number of processes that go into what we call the reading circuit. Reading is a complex and dynamic circuit that has to develop in the brain. So all of these elements of reading, phonology, orthography, semantics, syntax, and morphology are not just taught individually, but taught in such a way that they're all connected. Our kids who struggle with reading they need that level of unfolding of, of what a sentence is like. And that starts through the word and then goes through the whole process as you add ender benders and you add the different pieces of words that they can now be in control of. Read this word. You got it, buddy. Here at our school, we're using RAVO as um, part of our RTI model, we're using it as Tier 1 instruction for all students. We believe that all students should be exposed to all of these parts of language and linguistics. And then we're also using it as a Tier 2 intervention for students that need that additional experience, that additional support. Under Vendor S. We start with meaning. We start with the idea that many of our words exhibit this quality of polysemy or multiple okay. meanings. Using Miss Mim's tip over there, the kids are seeing that these are very simple three-letter words, but then they're learning all these meanings that are attached to them, so it's more complicated than they thought. Um, but also we get into adding enderbenders or suffixes to the words pretty early. So when you talk about jam is the first word, Everyone, they all know what jam is. I put it on my bread, I eat it for breakfast, I you know, put it in a sandwich. Then you start talking about something like jamming to music. They know what it is and they can talk about it. Oh yeah, you know, my uncle's in a band and I've seen him jam to music. And so they get excited about talking about words. The most kind of eye-opening times is when you'll be doing a science lesson or a social studies lesson or just reading a read-aloud book to the class and someone will interrupt you and say, Miss Lebeck, that's a mem word. It could also mean this. And it may have nothing to do with the core words we're doing, but to see the students generalize in that way really says that they're taking it in and they're retaining what we're doing and that it's meaningful to them. They have like a lot of like funny characters. Middle Revo Town, we have Mayor Mick. Mr. Mick. Many interesting connections. I like Miss Mim. Miss Mim. I like Miss Mim. She does many interesting meanings. She's a spider. She's purple. She's very smart. There's escargot, which is the S, and the better S. They really do help me, like, to read. A very good system. And there's Sam Sleuth. Sam Sleuth. He's a detective. Detectives ask a lot of questions like why, where, who, how. Fluency is only the beginning of what we use these words for. We wanted to also be able to use these words easily. 
within stories. So even though, for instance, our stories are quite simple, we work with those stories in a very detailed way so that our students, first of all, can read the story accurately, but they can also understand each and every word in a very deep and complex way. We are now going to read a minute story. With the minute story anthologies, they are able to, you know, take this book and they bring their core knowledge, they bring their I spy work knowledge, they bring their knowledge of, the, you know, the syntax and, and the enderbenders, and I think they feel really proud about their reading. She's tapping the table or tapping the edge of the bed. Most of them are funny and they're like not too long and not too hard. It's kind of like tricky and fun at the same time. And I don't even know I'm learning because I'm having lots of fun. I'm getting much more better, I have to say. It's not just a fluency program. It's not just a vocabulary program. It's not just a decoding program. It's all of these things taught individually, then connected and applied to text and finally to the process of deep and independent thought. That's where it really has its power, and I think that's where Ray goes different. It pulls all of those strands in together in a fun intervention that kids like to participate in. They like Ravo time. That's it. You know, oh, we're not going to do Ravo today. You know, that's, you know, there's something special going on. They like to be part of this intervention.